Hey guys, I'm Ryan Raymond, and tonight we're going to talk about how to use stock image websites like Pixabay, FreePick, Vexels, and Creative Fabrica in your Merch by Amazon and Print on Demand designs to use when you're designing a t shirt. So let's jump into it here. Pull up the first one. Okay, so I get asked about Pixabay all the time. People ask me, how can you use these images on here and should you use these images? So here is some of the things to keep in mind when using Pixabay. So um, sale or distribution of images or videos as posters, digital prints or physical products without adding any additional elements or otherwise adding value. Excuse me. So yes, you can use Pixabay images, but you cannot use them alone. You have to use them as a part of the design and you must add elements to it. Now, there are some other things to keep in mind with Pixabay. So read this next paragraph. Please be aware that while all images and videos on Pixabay are free to use for commercial and non-commercial purposes, depicted items in the images or videos such as identifiable people, logos, brands, etc., may be subject to additional copyrights. Property rights, privacy rights, trademarks may require the consent of third party or the license of these rights, particularly for commercial applications. Pixmay does not represent or warn that such consent or licenses have been obtained. What does that mean? Basically, the thing to keep in mind there is what they're saying is <clears throat> you have to change the image, you have to use it in a greater image, and just because it says you can use it for commercial purposes does not mean that you have all the rights to that image. So there may be uh, references to brands, celebrities, likenesses of people, uh, things that they don't actually have the copyright for. So for you to make a profit of that, you would need to go seek out actually the license from the owner on that. Now, the other issue with Pixabay and some of these stock image websites is people can just upload images to it. They don't, anybody can be a contributor. I could join and start uploading images. And it's me certifying that I own the rights to it. Just like you do when you upload on Merch by Amazon or Spreadshirt or Redbubble or Teespring or any of the other websites that you sell on, it's the same thing. So that's something to keep in mind. All right. So let's jump over here now. Free pick, free pick. I I do have a free pick subscription. I just think they have better images, and I feel a little bit safer with it because they go through a processing. It I, I just tend to have better results with uh, good clean images from free pick. I do have a subscription for it, um, but that's I, I bought the yearly one a while ago, so I don't use it very often. But here's the thing. So how to use the images. The differences between a secondary and a main element. An image is used as a main element when the resource is used in a product, physical or digital, as it has been downloaded from the websites without any changes. So just putting it on there. It will also be considered the main element when small changes are applied to the design. So like right here, they just took this B and added a few dots. What they're saying is that their image carries the weight of the design and therefore it's not applicable to do it that way. So look at this one here, the crab image, and then you used your own umbrella stars and beach and put this text and font in here where it says, are you ready for summer? That's how they want you to use their images. It, and they're not saying that you could go and grab this star umbrella and beach from their website and put it in there. That would arguably be, be holding weight, I would think. So um, that is some issues you do have to be aware of. Now, yes, you can use these Pixabay and um, any of these other websites, they are great to use, but just keep in mind, you gotta research what's behind them, the content, the copyright behind it. Now, the next one here is Vexels. Vexels has a full POD um, subscription. So to use their images, you have to, um, and you can use them as is, you have to have the merch subscription for Vexels. Um, and I do believe that they are coming out with a lifetime subscription. Um, they had reached out to me and they told me that they were coming out with a lifetime subscription and it was going to be like 500 and some dollars and you'll have a lifetime subscription for Vexels. So you can keep an eye out for that if that's, if you use Vexels. Um, but once again, just like anywhere else, think about this, the designs, let me pull open Vexels for you guys. Think about this, the designs, if you're downloading them and just using them as is, so can everyone else. 
So without modifying them or changing them, you're, you're not really gaining a competitive advantage. Um, so I would, I'd still recommend that you, um, upgrade and modify it. So with even that merch and POD, you're limited up to 1000 prints per design, um, 200 downloads per month and everything. So yeah, uh, Vexels is all up and ready to go. Okay. So it's already available. The lifetime subscription is so, um, I guess go check that out. Thank you, Ashley, for that info. Um, but yeah, uh, check it out. Let me know what you think there. Now, the other one that's out there is Creative Fabrica. They have two licenses, and Creative Fabrica has a basic print-on-demand usage and a full print-on-demand usage. So let's look at um, the two differences between the two licenses. So basic POD licensing is where you have to modify the um, images, and it can't be the main thing, just like free pick. So you have the original designs here they recommended. So just grabbing this and slapping it on the floral card, that's not gonna be allowed. Using it as a design element in the background and then putting your big center one in here with the congrats, they're okay with that. You have to modify it significantly. So with the basic POD license, create and upload craft and graphics to POD sites, generate unlimited sales, uh, ship valid POD. You cannot simply upload designs without adding distinctive new elements, combine multiple elements, create a new design and sell that, and upload actual font files to POD sites and upload the patterns to POD sites. So see, here's some more accepted usage. Now, they have a full print-on-demand license, so there's some things like this. Below, you'll find information which allow you to um, upload them to websites like Redbubble, Merch by Amazon, Zazzle, and others. So you can just take their images and upload them uh, right to it. You gotta make sure that the images are written as the full POD license, though, so that is important. Um, with the full POD products, you are not allowed to upload the actual files. Now here's the big thing with this license. You are not allowed to keep selling the full POD files without modification after you end your subscription. So if you use their full POD license, you must continue to pay for it if you just uploaded them as is. So basically you have to use them as the basic POD license or you have to keep paying them every month forever. Um, so that would be how you would have to use that one. Let me know what you guys think. That's kind of a quick summary. Make sure that you read the licenses on these websites. Each of them has a license with explicit instructions on how to use it. And also, especially if you're using ones where people can just upload, like it's a market, like literally it's uploading designs on Pixabay, just like you upload them on Merch by Amazon and letting other people use them. Keep in mind that you have to read the license and do a little bit of background research to make sure that that doesn't exist somewhere else and wasn't just stolen. Um, but in general, I think it'll work out really well for you guys. Let me know what website you guys are using for your stock images as a comment uh, down below. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. And with that, make sure that we watch another video. So jumping right over here, you should be able to watch this video right here. Uh, YouTube is recommending this one for you. It's what they're saying of videos I have made. This is the one you need to watch next. So they've probably been spying on your uh, search results and they're thinking that this might answer some questions you're having for you. And this one right here is my latest video. So thank you guys and I'll see you tomorrow.